Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of What the Smart Book Reviews. Candace is a burgundy bitch today. Um, hi, my name is Candace. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode. I really appreciate it. Um, in today's video, we are going to be reviewing a new author for me. I know what you're thinking. You're like, damn, bitch, it's not Penelope Douglas. No, it's not Penelope Douglas this week. Um, in today's video. I don't have it physically with me because I read it on my Kindle, <laughs> but I will be reviewing the first book in Tilly Cole's Scarred Soul series, and it is called Rays. Dun, 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 insert ridiculously muscly tattooed men. Um, this is book one. To my knowledge, I believe there are four books in this series. It has 272 pages per Amazon. I can't tell you whether or not that's the truth or a lie because I don't have the physical book. I'm sorry. For this one time, we're just gonna take Amazon's word for it, even though we know they're full of liars. Um, you can currently get this book for your Kindle or Nook for the price of $3.99. From everything I can see on Amazon, this book is not offered in any other format. So you cannot get, you can get audio, I believe, but you cannot buy the paperback copy of this book right now. And I'm not sure why. Um, is it available somewhere randomly on eBay or something? I, I don't, I didn't check because I just assumed no. Um, so yeah, so it looks like Kindle or Nook is really going to be your only option unless you want to subscribe to Audible and then you can listen to the audio version. Have fun. Fuck Audible, but have fun. Um, so yeah, I will read you guys a blurb and then we'll try and break it down as best I can because I started another book after finishing this one. And so that book is fresher than this book. So I know I'm going to fuck this up. <laughs> as usual. So... I got my little Dietchy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, which is another thing. Like, I'm going to show you guys each time, like, a fast little look at this, the notes that I have to make for myself. Because I'm a, like a little, literally a little old lady with no brain left. It's scary how quickly I forget stuff. What did I eat this morning? Anyway, um, okay. Uh, okay, so there's like a little uh, snippy thing. To take back life, one must first face death. Dot, dot, dot. Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. Conditioned in depravity to maim, to kill, and to slaughter, Prisoner 818 becomes an unrivaled and unstoppable fighter in the ring. Violence is all he knows. After years of incarceration in an underground hell, only one thought occupies his mind, revenge. Bloody, slow, and violent revenge. Revenge on the man who wronged him. Kisa Volkova is the only daughter of Kirill, the silencer Volkova, head of the infamous Red Bosses of New York's Russian Bratva. Her life is protected. In reality, it's a virtual prison. Her father's savage treatment of his rivals and his lucrative and coveted underground gambling ring, the Dungeon, ensures too many enemies lurk at their door. She dreams to be set free. Kisa has known only cruelty and loss in her short life. While working for her church, the only reprieve in her constant surveillance, Kisa stumbles across a tattooed, scarred, but stunningly beautiful homeless man on the streets. Something about him stirs feelings deep within her, familiar yet impossibly forbidden desires. He doesn't talk, doesn't communicate with anyone. He's a man beyond saving, but Kisa becomes obsessed with him, yearns for him, craves his touch, needs to possess this mysterious man, this man they call Raze. Okay, that's R-A-Z-E, okay, for you guys. All right, so, fuck all, where should I start? I don't know. Um, as you can clearly see, this book is um, a mafia romance. The two main characters for this book are um, Kisa, who is the main female character, and Rays, who is the main male character. 
Uh, Ray's has no memories from before he was imprisoned in a, a an Alaskan, like an underground, like it's like an underground fighting ring for like a, I want to say boxers, but it's probably, it's like more like MMA type style fighting. Um, and yeah, he, so he, he was taken there as a boy and he has no memories other than three or four little snippets of ain't like a uh, think words that cause him deep rage. Um, he, he like scrubs them into the, or like carves them into the wall of his cell, uh, which is, um, it's like, uh, Alec Durov, Brooklyn, New York, revenge, kill, I think are the, the, the words that he carved. He doesn't really remember why he carved them. He just knows that he has this burning desire for revenge against this one particular guy, even though he doesn't really remember how he wronged him. Um, so he's taken to what's known as the Gulag, which is what they call the underground fighting ring. Um, he's taken there as a boy. He, there, he's pumped full of drugs uh, that help erase his memories and steroids to help pump him up and they basically turn him into a killing machine. Um, he was their like number one fighter or one of their number one fighters um, for like a gambling ring that that they imagine like dog fights. It's involuntary and they don't have a choice but they they still do it and people gamble on it and it's disgusting, right? Um, so one night there is a prison break and everyone has, they've killed the guards or most of the guards and everyone's getting out. One, uh, the one and only person that he considers his friend, uh, in the gulag comes and opens his cell door. They make a run for it. They get separated. He makes his way to New York f to enact his revenge, which is really the only direction or destination that he can think of to go in. Um, he gets to New York and he tracks down Alec, this guy, Alec Duroff. He finds out that Alec is also part of like a gambling fighting ring. Um, but instead of it being done involuntarily underground, it's done in what's known as the, the dungeon, which is a fight club uh, in Brooklyn. And it's run by the mob and uh, people from other fam mob families around the world come in to see these guys fight to the death. It's completely voluntary for you to enter, um, but there's like hefty prize for the winner and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so he wants to fight Durov. He realizes that, okay, the only way I'm going to get to Alec is by fighting him in the ring and I can justifiably kill him there because it is a fight to the death and there will be no repercussions for me, right? Um, uh, he still doesn't understand why he, he, uh, wants to kill this guy, but he just knows that he needs to. It's, it, it's like ingrained in him. He goes into the gym, the gym, which is where the dungeon is. And he's told that unless he has a sponsor, he has to buy his way in. The buy-in is $10,000, $10,000, $100,000. I can't remember, $10,000, shit. Anyway, he has to basically buy in with uh, several thousand dollars. He has no money. He's sleeping on the streets. So he sees um, like uh, homeless people begging for money. And he sees like r people passing by dropping money into like their cans or buckets or whatever. And he thinks to himself in a very childlike way, in my opinion, he thinks to himself, okay, well, until then, until I can figure out a better solution, I'm just going to panhandle on the street for money. Okay, cool. Uh, so he's out there doing that. He's living in an alley. He's homeless. Insert Kisa. Kisa is the um, only child of 
the main mafia boss of New York. Um, she used to have a twin brother, but he was killed. Uh, there was like a, a big kerfuffle, um, if you will. And they had, she had a twin brother, Alec, uh, the guy that Ray's wants to murder, and another boy by the name of Luca, who was the son of the um, third man in charge in the, in the Bratva. Um, Alec is the son of the second, the right-hand man. Uh, the, he, he's the son of the right-hand man to Kisa's father. Um, so as kids, they played together. Uh, Kisa, her twin brother, oh, Rodin, what is his name? What the fuck was his name? Rodian? I wrote it down somewhere. No, 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 where is it? Rodian, okay, Ro Rodian, Rodian. Um, they played together as kids, Kisa, uh, her twin brother Rodian, Alec, and Luca. So Kisa and uh, Luca have always had like a special connection. Um, it's repetitive throughout the book that their parents told them or their mothers told them that Kisa's eyes are blue and Luca's eyes are brown. But Luca's eyes, his left eye has um, like a smudge of blue in it, like a, de like a defect almost, where a part of his eye, his brown eye is blue. And his parents, their parents basically told them that uh, God recognized that they were two souls that were con should be connected to each other forever. So he took a piece of Kisa's eye and put it inside of Luca or a piece of Kisa's soul and put it inside of Luca and it manifested itself um, as the blue smudge in Luca's eye. So they've been close since they were born and it's very clear that they're in love with each other, even from a young age. Uh, this does not sit well with Alec. Alec was raised by a very hard man, whereas at least Kisa and um, Luca were raised by men who, yeah, they did bad things, but they weren't bad men. They, they were loving parents. Alec was raised by a very hard man. Uh, he was made to feel like he was not tough enough, not good enough, you know, that whole um, macho, you know, you've, you've got to kick it, if this guy looks at you wrong, kick his ass, like that, that type of environment. So he grew up very violent and very hostile, and he wants Kisa. It's very apparent that he, want, that he want, wants to be with Kisa. He wants to possess Kisa because he doesn't want the meekles. He wants to own her. So it is said that there was an incident many years ago when they were kids where um, something happened and Luca murdered Kisa's brother, Rodian. Um, in the process or to, to get rid of any witnesses, he also stabbed Alec in the stomach. Um, Alec survived, but Rodian died. So when it was, when this was brought to light, um, Kisa's father, who had just lost his son, instead of putting Luca to death, showed mercy and put him on a transport bus with other um, youths to go to um, like a farm, like a, to work as manual labor at like some Russian farm somewhere. So um, that is where everyone thinks that Luca went. Um, Everyone that was involved in terms of Kisa's father, his right-hand man, Alec, Alex's father, 
um, Alex's father. Alex's father. <laughs> and um, Luca's father, who's number three. Uh, they are the only ones who know that uh, they all think that Luca has died. So essentially what happened was uh, during the transport to the farm or wherever, where they were supposed to go to work uh, to do manual labor, there was, a, there was an accident and the, the bus was essentially burnt up. Um, so everyone is under the impression that Luca died along with several other boys that were on that transport. Um, in, when in fact they were taken off of that and taken off the transport and sent by the Georgian mom and sent to work in the gulag as fighters. Okay. So, Kisa is now present day in a relationship with Alec. Apparently she's the only one that calms him down. He is a psycho who just, he's not, he's not nice. He's not a nice person. He's sick and demented and not in like a attractive good way. Cause I know we've all been there where we've been like, oh yeah, he bad, but I could tame him. No, you don't want none of this cause he's legit crazy. Um, he is essentially now that Rodian is dead and um, Luca is dead, um, Alec is in line to take the, the, the Bratva throne for the city, the New York chapter of the Bratva. It solidifies that by him marrying Kisa. So he has finally, like they're, they're finally engaged to be married. Um, he basically takes out his anger and aggression and frustration on her. At no point does she really say no. She kind of takes it as like her, like this is just life and this is what I have to do and I don't really have anything to live for anyway because Luca's dead, so fuck it. Um, he's training for the upcoming death match. In the, in the dungeon. Uh, Kisa, the only place she has that she can go to get away from her father and his men who surveil her 24 seven and Alec who surveils her 24 seven um, is church. They're very Catholic and they go, she does like a lot of charity work. So one night she's at the Catholic Church and she's basically um, going out onto the streets with packs of food, meal packs that have been prepared for the homeless. So she's going out there and she's accosted. She gets off alone. There's like a little, um, like, a, like an old man, uh, an old homeless man that she has befriended that stays kind of out of the way on like a side alley that she's really not supposed to venture into, but she does to give him food because she cares about him. And so she's there and she gets accosted by somebody else. Uh, the person is getting ready to um, like brutally attack her and uh, he's pulled off by another homeless man. When she gets a look at the homeless man's face, First, she sees that he's wearing like a gray sweatshirt, like a zip, zipper, like a hoodie, and that he's covered in tattoos, his chest, his arms, everything, and that he's uh, scarred up and he looks very rough, but he's also huge and bulky and muscly and yum. Um, she gets a look at his face and he kind of always keeps his eyes like the way the author described it is he always keeps his eyes downcast and when he's fighting in the ring he puts like black coal like a um, shoe polish over his eyes to deter people from seeing his eyes um 
she she's the first person that he looks at in a long time like in the eye and when she sees his eyes she sees two brown eyes one with a smudge of blue and she's astonished she can't believe what she's seeing she's only ever met one person who had those types of eyes and it was Luca and to her knowledge Luca died so who is this homeless man who's jacked up and has Luca's eyes so she's intrigued and she feels like an immediate connection to him he saves her life and then he just like um wanders off she gets back with her group and she goes home and the next time she has an available like and the next time she has a an opportunity the next time she has an opportunity to see him she takes it so she's going back out to deliver the meals and he basically tells her that he doesn't know who she is and he tells her I, I don't know who this person is that you're talking about this Luca guy I don't know my name in the in the gulag I was known as 818 number 818 um I have no memories from before when I was a child and I need money that's why I'm out here on the streets she's like what do you need money how much money do you need and he's like I need like ten thousand dollars or whatever the buy-in is she goes back to the gym and she takes money from the safe and she goes and gives him the ten the the money to buy into the the fight because she just feels like she owes him for saving her life and she feels that connection to him that un unknown connection so she gives him the money her best friend who happens to be Luca's sister uh is like girl you crazy you done lost your mind you giving this homeless man all this money and she can't really explain why she did it she just knows that she felt like she needed to so he buys into the fight and he starts training at the gym uh Alec does not recognize him he doesn't he doesn't get close enough to see his eyes because he was living on the street before he's now living in the gym after the gym closes he's like put, pulling out a mat and a blanket and sleeping there because it's better than the alternative of sleeping on the street when he's not sleeping and the gym is open he's being trained by this guy named victor um who's like a drunkard he's he, he had nothing to live for he turns out he used to be work as transport for the gulags and so at first Ray's is very hostile towards him about that like you helped you worked for the people who brutalized me and um, thousands of other kids and victor is ashamed that he was part of that even if it was only in a transportation fashion like you know what i mean um so so he's when he's not sleeping in the gym he's training in the gym he's you know bulking up he's getting ready for his fight with alec him and alec have like little tete-a-tetes anytime they see each other especially if kisa is around alec makes a point to um stake his claim on kisa and sometimes going even as far as dragging her into the office and fucking her brains out against like the the glass behind the blinds where you can clearly see that that's what's happening and everyone else just turns a blind eye like mm, we don't see anything mm -hmm. but it's eating Ray's alive because he he's he wants Kisa now um Kisa comes to the gym one night to do like paperwork she needs to get rid of she like she has to get out of the house she's going insane and uh, she has her driver take her to the gym for her to work she realizes that Ray's is staying there they have like their little moment where they both admit like hey we got a thing for each other right and they have sex and it's like mm -hmm. okay yummy yum sex um she has to go back home so she does 
but now she's invested in and everything. There are certain characteristics of Ray's that she notices that were things that Luca used to do, like how he would, uh, certain facial expressions he would make and things like that. And it's just cementing in her mind the idea that Luca raises Luca. She doesn't know how, she doesn't know why, but she's, she knows that, that she, she believes that it's him. So she starts trying to um, get him to open up about memories that he's, that he has, as well as trying to unlock the memories that he had from before. Um, the drugs that they used to pump him with in the gulag have long since worn off. And now he's getting flashes of things that he doesn't understand that he's seeing from like, as, as if he's an outside third party watching a story. He sees uh, memories of um, a girl and a boy who clearly were, had feelings for each other. He doesn't know the boy is him. So, you know. Um, so she starts taking him to places low key, like at night when nobody's around, taking them, taking him to places that they used to go to as kids to try and unlock those memories that he's lost. And he does start to remember things. And it finally comes about that he remembers that, uh, Alec was the one who killed Rodian. Alec was told by his father to kill Rodian so that he could be the next in line to assume the, the Bratva throne, basically. Um, Alec, I mean, um, Luca would not have been a threat to that agenda because Luca was third in line and Alec was naturally second. But it was icing on the cake to get rid of Luca because Luca was the only thing in the way of Alec having Kisa. So he stabs him, he kills Rodian, and then he stabs himself to make it appear as if Luca was the one who did it. Luca gets shipped off, he gets Kisa and the throne, and all's well with the world, right? Um, Alec has participated in several of these um, dungeon death matches. Uh, he's always come out the victor. He has every intention of winning this one. Now there's this unknown fighter who appears to be very good. And so he feels very threatened. And so he takes every opportunity that he can to assert his dominance over Kisa and over the situation. And just to make Rays feel, you know, basically worthless. So now that, now that the memories of what really happened the day that that Rodian was killed had been unlocked. Rays realizes that he is Luca. He still doesn't remember his his family in terms of his sister or his parents, um, but he remembers Kisa. Every uh, the way he puts it is every memory that he every every important memory that he's ever had has had her in it. So he realizes that he's in love with her and that she has been in love with him this entire time. And now he's determined, even more determined to kill Alec in the ring so that he can get Kisa because he knows that Alec will never give her up voluntarily. Um, so Kisa's like, okay, I'm gonna go. You're gonna go back to the gym, you're gonna train. You're gonna finish, tomorrow's the fight. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're, you're gonna get in the ring and you're gonna kill Alec. In the meantime, I'm gonna go home and tomorrow before the fight, I'm gonna have a conversation with my dad and I'm gonna tell him everything that happened with Rodian, the real, the truth. And he's like, okay. She goes back to the gym to drop him off. He goes inside, she gets accosted by Alec. Alec had apparently followed them and seen them having sex and seen her taking him to their little cove together that they used to go to as kids at Brighton Beach. And he's unhinged. He takes her to this um, like a dock, this like apartment that he keeps, penthouse apartment that he keeps at the dock 
where he does unspeakable things to people. She goes inside and half of the apartment is covered in plastic and like old dried blood from where he's tormented and tortured people in there. He's clearly just fucking nuts. Uh, he takes her in to the apartment and he essentially beats the shit out of her and then he rapes her and she's crying and she's at first she's trying to appease him like no baby I'm not, I didn't have anything to do with this guy or the, you know whatever and then when he when she realizes that she's been caught she tries to fight fight him off he's not having it and he he attacks her up until that point this this book was labeled or I guess the series in general was labeled as dark romance because I did ask for dark romance suggestions on Instagram after I finished the Devil's Night series. And this series was recommended to me by several people. Up until that, almost the end of the book, I was thinking to myself, what's dark about this? I, what I'm seeing is like a typical mafia romance. Like it has hints of mafia stuff. Like the main core of it is a mafia romance. And yes, it does have hints of like um, brutality when it comes to the gulag and things like that. But the triggering scenarios that I would associate with a dark romance novel or a doc dark romance series were not there until this bit. And then when he basically beats the hell out of her and rapes her multiple times throughout the night. And then I was like, oh, okay, there it is. That, that's the bit that that put it into that category because it was, it was pretty fucked up. Um, so he basically tortures her all night and then he leaves her a beaten bloody mess in his bed to go the next morning to fight Luca in the ring and kill him basically. Um, she comes to and she tries to, she gets out of the apartment she goes down to the docks where some rando man finds her and is like, miss, are you okay? I should call an ambulance for you. And she's like, no, do you have a phone? Just, I, I don't want an ambulance, just give me your phone. She calls Luca's sister who comes to pick her up. She tells her like a little bit, she's like, I'll explain everything when we get to the fight. I need to get to the dungeon. I need to see my dad. I need to find Luca or I need to find Ray's as she says. Um, Talia, Luca's sister, drives them there. She makes her way up to, by this time, Ray's and uh, Alec are in the ring and they're full on fighting. Um, she makes her way up to her father's like um, private box in the, in the ring or in the dungeon uh, that's behind like bulletproof glass and at first he's like, when he hears her voice, he's happy to see her. He turns around, he sees that she's literally a, like a mangled mess. And he's like, who the fuck did this to you? Because whoever it is, I want them. And then Talia speaks up and she says, Alec beat the shit out of her. And she sees what's going on down in the ring. And she explains to her father and to uh, Talia's father, AKA Luca's father, who is also there in the box. It's just the two of them. Um, everything that she's found out and the fact that Ray's is Luca. Um, it's about this time that Ray's looks up and sees her through the glass and sees what Alec has done to her. And he loses his shit, like more so than he already had. And he basically just brutally kills Alec in the ring. Uh, Kisa's dad says, get the guards. I want his father, Alec's father, grabbed as soon as the match is over. I don't want to give him a chance to run. I don't want to give him a chance to do anything. You get him, you bring him to me. Okay. So they do. And Luca you know, is consoled by Kisa and, oh, you, my poor baby type situation. Um, he allow Kisa's dad allows Luca's father to kill Alex's father. 
as retribution for taking his son away and framing him for this hor horrible murder and and everything that he endured in the gulag he feels like yes it's your duty or it's your it's your privilege to kill this son of a bitch who devised this entire plan to take over the mafia um he does they give Luca a little bit of time to acclimate with just Kisa before go going to take before Kisa takes him to his parents home to be reunited with his sister and his mo mother and father which goes really well and they profess their love for each other at the end and it's just it was good it was very good um so for the rating for the book uh, I gave it an eight and a half. I think going in, I had no expectations in terms of, I did not read the blurb at all. I started this book based solely on the suggestions of fellow bookstagrammers. Um, so I did not go into it with any expectations in terms of plot. Uh, the book is well written. I like the author's style of writing. It's very engaging, it, it's not choppy, it's not, it's very well done. Um, I think coming straight off of Penelope's uh, Devil's Night series, that it may have just ruined me for every other type of dark novel <laughs> because, because I came into it thinking, okay, it's gonna be something like that and it wasn't, it was something entirely different, but not in a bad way, you know what I mean? Um, so I gave it a solid eight and a half. It, I was engaged enough that I will read the next book in the series. It was a very good book. It was very well written. It was interesting. It was, um, engaging. And from everything that I've heard, the series gets better and better as it goes along, which was similar to how it was with um, Penelope Douglas's Devil's Night series. I felt like Michael's book, the first one, Corrupt, started out a little bit slow, but I think that that's typically always how a series begins. You're not invested at the beginning. You get invested as you go along, and then you the series as a whole takes over your life. So I think that's probably what will happen. I will read the next book in the series because I do want to see what else she has to offer. And this is the first time I've ever read anything by Tilly Cole. Um, and I did enjoy the book. So I will be continuing with the series and see how it goes. Um, so yeah, so I gave it, gave it a solid eight and a half. I um, would definitely recommend if you like mafia romance and if you don't have, if you don't mind some triggering scenarios, I would definitely recommend this book to people. I think it's a good, it's definitely a good read. Um, and again, like, if you're going to read it, know that there are other books in the series and as it goes along, it, the plots get progressively more complicated and more detailed and juicy and meaty and, you know. Um, so I'm hoping that's the case and that the next book I'm going to be like, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. Did I forget anything? I hope not after 40 minutes of babbling. If you enjoyed this video, if you like me and you like my channel, please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. Uh, if you if you do subscribe, make sure you hit the little bell so you get notifications when I upload a new video. I upload at least once a week. Uh, if you want, you can follow me on social media. I am very present on Instagram. I also have a members only Facebook group uh, and a Twitter account devoted to this channel. I will link them all down below in the description box and I'll put a little banner on screen for you guys to see. Um, and yeah, I really thank you so much for watching and sticking with me for another review. <laughs> uh, and I guess I'll see you guys in my next video. I love you so much, okay? Bye. Let's get this party started. Let's get it started. Ha! Let's get it started in here. I have the zero dance moves, just so you know. Don't don't come for me. Arrivederci, signorina. I want to watch Grumpy Old Men too. Grumpier old men.
Tis the season to be annoyed. Tra la 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 la. <sighs> Jay. <laughs> Speaking of, I thought the purpose of, like, yes, I drink a lot of tea. Yes, I drink a lot of coffee. But I thought the purpose of drinking from something with a straw would help you your teeth not get stained when you drink a lot of coffee or a lot of tea and um <laughs> lies my teeth are stained to hell and back uh i have used two different kinds of whitening stuff and uh, it's not really working so i think what i'm gonna have to do is go to the dentist for like a deep old clean um because i can't stand looking at myself smiling i go to laugh and it's like ha yellow teeth no absolutely not <laughs> no <laughs> like i take zero pride in my appearance but i'm not i'm not doing that I'm not going that far. It's like he just realized he has a water bottle. Now he's scratching and shuffling around the shavings and just causing general mayhem all over the floor. I just vacuumed. Okay. Anyway, let's get into it, baby. All right. My head hurts. I'm exhausted, but I can't. I'm so annoyed. You don't care. I know. It's fine. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Somebody mentioned me in their story. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Um, me, 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 me. I ain't got no lipstick on. Should I put on different lipstick? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. I'll be right back. And now I'm back. From outer space. What's up, Candace, you burgundy bitch? Okay. Um, let me fix my hair like I always do on camera, as if you guys are interested in seeing that. Okay. Let's get started because the plot of this book is going to be completely lost. Okay. Question. How do bitches, like, um, outline their lips to make their lips look bigger? I can't even put on regular lipstick without fucking fucking them up so how do you even and I'm following my natural lip line so skills that I don't have all right let's go let's get into it baby I'm gonna cut all this out by the way all right so conditions in depravity to maim conditions in depravity conditioned Kisa Volkova is the only daughter of Krill the Silencer. Is it Kirill? Kirill the Silencer. Her father's savage treatment of his rivals and his lucrative and un. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kisa and Luca were always. Oh my god. Are you kidding? Again? Are you kidding? Lump. I'm gonna use this time to give my back a rest from sitting up too straight because I have terrible posture and I slump all day every day. <laughs> so sitting up straight to record these videos literally feels like my spine is breaking in half. For those of you just tuning in who don't have any history of watching my videos, that is my rabbit, Freckles, who takes great pleasure in interrupting my videos to either flip his food bowl around, drink water very loudly, as if he's been in the Arabian desert for months, um, or flip his shavings around and just make a general nuisance of himself. And he does this every time I sit down to record. Because this is the only room that I have enough space in to put my table. Oh, alrighty then. Sorry, I ran out of storage because my phone is the pits. And um, I'm back. 
my angle is probably different than it was before, but I'm sure you'll be okay. You'll adjust. You're well-adjusted individuals, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, um, what the fuck was I talking about? What was I saying? What happened? What happened? What happened? You hurt yourself? How? Why were you trying to bang your nose? Why are you trying to bang your head? No, that's not a that's not a good reason to hurt yourself. You should not be hurting yourself on purpose. Does your head hurt? No. Okay. So what are you doing? Okay. Well, go take a rest. Go lay on the sofa and take a rest. I'll be done in ten minutes, and I'll come over there. Okay. All right, go. No, leave that alone. Go ahead. I'm almost done. Hey, you're going to knock my stuff off. No. Go. No. You think you're cute. Get out of here. Go. No. <laughs> go, go, go. No. <laughs> now, go. I love you. Go. Look, you got lipstick on your head now. <laughs> we got to pick up Daddy soon, so I got to finish. All right? Oh. Go. Go make sure your thing is charging, okay? All right, chicken. All right, thank you, chicken. Anyway. Um, then close the door all okay, the way. Okay, close it all the way. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <sighs> Why isn't this book available in paperback? Tell me. Tell me. It was good. It was good. I would buy it. I would buy the, I would buy the trade paperback if I could get it, but I can't. Come on, man. Come on, Miss Cole. Help a bitch out. <laughs> Let me get that trade paperback. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Psycho. Um. Ma, 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 ma. I was thinking about doing some stuff, like some videos with my hair up, but then I came to the realization that I, I have a 12 head. I mean, I already knew that, but like, if I uncover it, it's gonna be the only thing you can focus on in all of my videos, so, no. Just from the time of recording this, I have gotten 400 notifications on my phone. Text messages, um, Instagram notifications, Facebook notifications. All right, I'm going to go. I love you guys so much. I hope I didn't fuck up much. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> what is happening to me? Seriously, what's happening to me? Um, my brain. My brain hurts. My brain hurts. My brain hurts. I'm so tired. Oh, God. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys later. I love you. Bye.